Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> I'm Shinichi Ina from Capcom. I work at Capcom as a VPOE, a general manager in the system divisions. In this session, I would like to introduce Capcom's challenge to make fun games. Uh, this presentation covers databases, uh, containers, and machine learning to accomplish that goal. And English is another challenge for us. <laughs> very well, very well. Uh, so we work closer with the AWS. <coughs> Mm. We would like to introduce solution architecture learn. Help us to transfer optimal knowledge to you. Yeah. yeah. So hello everyone. I'm Liang Fan, I'm solution architect of Capcom. So I'm very exciting to have a chance to tell Capcom a great story. And English is a challenge for us. And <laughs> at the first time, we actually talked about Capcom to use Amazon Poly to do the other session. And of course, and unfortunately, this plan is not permitted. So I will present the overall project and as well as Capcom's technical achievement. So here is the session agenda. First, I will review the Capcom Cloud journey with Shinichi and introducing AWS implementation and challenge and problem. Next, I will introduce how Capcom make effort to solve those problems, introducing uh, their improving their operational efficiency by using container and fully, database, uh, fully managed database, and accelerating game design by using reinforced learning. Then there's a deep dive part. So at that part, I will introduce in the challenge and obstacle when they're developing a new games. And at the end, we are going to have a live QA session face-to-face -face with uh, the member of Capcom Field Lead Engineer. So at that time, you can ask a question directly to them about how they reach their solutions. So before we start, I think some people may not know about Capcom. Shinichi, could you please introduce Capcom briefly? Okay, first, uh, let's take a look at the interactive video of Capcom. Enjoy. Oh. Take some. Thank you. Uh, for over 30 years, Capcom has uh, produced 19 games. Uh, through this, uh, sorry, <laughs> through this series of games, we have fun in all over the world. Uh, the, uh, the three most popular game titles, we, which sales have reached 190 million units. Okay, thank you for your introduction. So let's go to the Capcom Cloud journey first. So at Capcom, engineers like to build what they use. So they build their own engine, RE engine, and they also build the server. In 2008, uh, Capcom are started running their server on on-premise environment. Then they moved to the private cloud at 2012. And then they moved to the AWS. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> Shinichi, could you tell me what caused Capcom move to the AWS? Huh? Me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the initial reason was a mobile game. Mm. We needed uh, infrastructure that could that could handle that could handle 
Hmm? One more chance. <laughs> that could handle the rapid growth of users. Therefore, we chose AWS for its global scalability and its quick uh, automatic scaling. Uh, can I play? This is Monster Hunter Explorer, the mobile game launched in Japan in 20, 2015. This is the first Capcom game running on AWS. After the release, we received more access than expected. We can say that AWS deployment was the right decision. Yeah, I'm very glad to hear this. So now let me introduce about Most Hunter Explorer a little bit more. So this title is launched in 2015, and then it got over 9 million downloads worldwide. And it also have eight large version updates since its launch. So after the game is launched, it achieved 5 million RPM requests per minute and 1 million DAU, daily active user, and 20 million QPM query per minute. So the architecture at the beginning, I look at this. OK, so in Capcom, they use EC2 instance and many OSS software to handle this project. So they use NGX and Node.js for the game server and web server. And they use MongoDB as their main user storage. And they use Elastic Cache and Memcache, uh, Elastic Redis and Memcache to handle the cache server and use log, uh, FrameTD to handle the log. So all these are in the uh, use the EC2 instance. So it seems like Capcom do not handle the, uh, do not use so many management work. So, okay, I think of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's some problem, there's no speaker note here, so I will explain why they do not choose management service. So at the first time, uh, Capcom moved to, since it's the first title they moved to the cloud, they thought that there's two challenges to use many services they do not know. See, they prefer to do the, all the things by themselves. So the good thing is that Capcom use AWS to scale the server very quickly. But they still suffer with many OSS software operation. So they want to have more time to do the things like make game fun, but not the operational work. So am I right? <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. I think so, I think so. <laughs> OK, so then let me introduce Capcom recent activation for that. And in the photo session, there's two parts. One is about container, and one is about the reinforced learning. So to be clear, all the things I will be introduced in the following section is all Capcom's team's work. OK, thank you, Shinichi. Thank, thank you. OK, so as Shinichi mentioned, there are several problems uh, in the previous project. So in order to solve those problems, Capcom new project has enacted several goals. First, it reduced the cost of the operation. So like scaling server or update some certain middleware, there's many operations in their previous project, and they want to reduce that cost. And second, it would reduce the database maintenance workload. So previously, they used MongoDB, and they are quite suffer with MongoDB operation and want to improve that. And next, they also want to eliminate the single point of failure on a particular employee. 
So in previous project, some operation like update a NGX server with zero downtime can only be done by a certain employee. That means that employee become the single point of failure of that project. So in the new project, they want to eliminate that. And also, and of course, they want a new project has more performance. So they want a new project could leverage uh, maybe two or three times of most Hunter Explorer. Okay, so how to achieve that goal? Capcom thought one way to achieve that goal is to use food management service. So the service act as key player is Amazon EKS and Amazon DynamoDB. So by using EKS, the operation cost has been reduced and the daily maintenance workload can be done only inside of the EKS. So in another word, so member only need to learn the operation about the EKS, but not all the open source uh, software and AWS operation. So the learning cost has been reduced and more member can handle the operation, then the single point of failure problem also be solved. And for the database, uh, at the beginning, Capcom indeed thinking about to use Aurora. However, Capcom consider that they still have to pay some data maze maintenance workload if they choose Aurora. So for games, handling an unpredictable increase of user and the sudden access of user is a quite a basic requirement. So thus, if they choose SQL-based database, how to manage the partition and the sharding become an essential skill. So that skill were not possible for any member and in any time. So on the other hand, DynamDB can do automatically scaling and get partitioned. And what the best things Capcom team thought is that they do not need to aware about DB instance. They thought that it's very cool to use DynamDB just by API, not care about the instance, and can use it right away. Okay. Here is the architecture used inside of Capcom. So at Capcom, the early stage, the uh, development, so give the all member overview of the architecture is a quite a basic requirement. And engineer also hold the pen and public to draw a picture like this. So I like this picture very much. And however, since it's reinvent, I prefer to use a more formal architecture diagram. Yeah. <laughs> So this may be a little bit boring, but I think this could uh, make the best knowledge transfer. So let me explain the formal architecture. Yeah. So EKS use API server as part and reduce it to the ALB. And then main database is DynamoDB. So Capcom also use Elastic Cache to improve the read performance. So in game, there's several environment. There's staging environment, development environment, QA environment, and production environment. So how to separate those environments? First, Capcom separates this environment by ALB routing. Also, they add the prefix of each environment to each DynamoDB data, uh, table. So which means they can identify each of the table just by the name. And there's two points of this architecture. So first one is fully CI-CD progress. They use GitLab CI and Rendac. So Capcom team, they do not operate AWS uh, Many Consult directly. So instead, they write the deployment and some YAML file, and then through the CI progress, so GitLab CI will automatically uh, do the EKS job and maybe change the schema of DynamoDB. And for the next part, maybe it's a little bit hard to show in the architecture, but let me explain how Capcom deal with master data in game. So what is master data? Maybe someone do not have a game background, may not know the master data. So the master data means some attribute uh, in the game. For example, uh, some, maybe some players attack and maybe some items name. 
So those mass data are maybe created by the designer and not the programmer. So in this project, Capcom decides not to put mass data into the database. Instead, they save the mass data just with the container. So when, they, when the container starts up, they load all the mass data into memory. So this means that container image also contain the mass data. So why they do this? There's two benefits to do that. First, they can access the mass data more quickly because there's no network communication cost and all the mass data are in memory, so they can ask the data more faster. And then they can have an ability to be a clean rollback. So if they want to do a rollback, they just need to roll back the container image and all the things are rollback. So it can do a very clean rollback way. Okay, here's component they work with Amazon EKS. So some components are used to link the Kubernetes to the AWS service, like external DNS, AWS ALB ingress controller, and Kubernetes IAM. And also, they use Rendec and EKS CTL for DevOps. So they are all famous tools, maybe you have already know, and all of them are great library Capcom team start. Okay, then let's move the advantage of DynamDB. So Capcom team thought there's many advantages of using DynamDB. One of them are smooth scaling. So Capcom team said uh, with DynamDB, scaling can execute without any downtime. And what is particularly surprising is that even if there's hundreds of million of record in the DynamDB, there's no performance decrease. And of course, committing capacity unit is required. And also, backup can be complete with the best, with the least effort and without any implementation task. So, and there's also no parameter tuning needed. So developers are released from the complicated parameter tuning task, like uh, optimizing my conf for my skill. So with those advantages, Capcom team thought that their database maintenance work have uh, definitely decreased. However, not all the things are good, so there's still some challenge when they use DynamDB. I will explain that in the deep dive part. So just a quick recap of the use Amazon EKS and DynamDB. So first, operation load has been decreased, so developers are released from the manual scaling and incident recovery. And then database maintenance cost was reduced by using DynamDB, and also there's no single point of failure of employee because they use many database and a common language called Kubernetes. That is amazing. So then let me introduce another initiative that Capcom do. That is accelerating their game design by using reinforcement learning. So first, let me introduce what is the level design. So the level design means the balance of the game. So depending on the level design, the game can be interesting or boring. So for example, consider this tile matching game shown in the slide. So to complete this game, a player needs to break a special tile or erase a certain number of color in a pre-limited step. So consider what is the most property number to clear this stage. So it will be very hard if you set the limitation to five. And in contrast, if you set the limitation to 20, and it will be, will be too easy, and everyone can clear this stage, and so the game is not interesting. So maybe the correct number is 10 to 13, so let's just set this to 12. So to find the number 12 is the job of level design. However, it's quite difficult to find the number 12. 
Some people can quickly find the number of 12 based on their previous experience. However, other one may take quite a long time. So people with a deep understanding of game contents can find this number quickly, but novice designer can take a, a long time. Therefore, these tasks are highly related on the designer skill. And in addition, so designer needs to collect the data by testing the game many times. So this task also takes cost and the number of employees. So in conclusion, level design is one of the most important in game development, but it costs a lot. To solve this problem, Capcom team created a tool called Level Design Tool to use reinforced learning to help them to save the cost. OK, so what is Level Design Tool to do? First, they create an AI NPC, so the known player character, use reinforced learning and Unity ML agent. So maybe uh, you do not know about Unity ML agent. So Unity is a famous game engine, and Unity ML agent is a toolkit to help to build ML tasks in Unity. So they also choose AWS to do the learning progress because if you do the learning progress in your individual PC, and of course the PC capacity got fully used by the learning progress, and developer cannot do any other task. So after learning, Capcom team used this learning model to infer and accumulate data. Again, they use ECS so that the work can be done while the conducting the inference. So since the goal of the task is to collect the data, they also do parallel tasks in ECS. And then at the end, the visualize part. So the visualize accumulate the data and make it easier to understand. And it almost used to support the level design. So use the visualize, it makes it easier to understand the overall balance and some detailed information which is normally hard to notice. So let me introduce how the support tool to do that things. So as I show in the slide, there's some training data, and Capcom uses those training data to do the reinforced learning. Then they make an NPC to do the operating. So you can see, NPC are auto play the game. And in the back, the program records how many taps they clear for one stage. OK? So about the level design tool, the visualize part. So the information and the number of tabs that auto played are shown in the graph. And then you can confirm the detailed information, just maybe look at the bar chart or the individual chart. So it's easy to understand current stage, and it's very easy to share with your colleagues. So for example, the view shows the whether the stage is gradually become more difficult uh, when the stage goes on, or you can confirm whether one stage is extremely difficult or on the normal as you expect. So the very visualization data uh, makes level design more easier. And then there's uh, the reason why they use reinforced learning. So the use reinforced learning is mainly to about the maintenance ability. So in game, maybe as you know, there's many updates happened in games. So if they use an uh, in-house AI engine, uh, if there's an update comes, Capcom need to update their program, AI program, every time. So it takes the resource of an engineer. But if they choose to use reinforced learning, what they need to do is just do the relearn. And then as long as the program not changed so much, they do not need to change the program. And here is why they use 
ring, uh, Unity ML agent. So Unity ML agent currently is in beta, but they thought it's fine to use for support suit. And by using ML agent, so have greatly reduced the number of problems we introduce the machine learning. And also, Capcom only need to set the learning environment and do the program of reinforced learning. The other work can be done by the Unity ML agent. Okay, here is the architecture of that. So for the learning side, when a Unity app is up, is up to the S3, it will trigger a Lambda function, and Lambda function will launch ECS container. And ECS is queue the learning job and output the learning model to S3 after completing a specific number of integration. Okay, go to the learning part. So then about the inference side. So at the same way, when the app is up to the S3, so they use AWS step function to handling all the progress. So as I mentioned before, uh, the object of the, this progress is to accumulate the data. So Capcom do the parallel rail to accumulate data, and they also use spot instance to save the cost. And after the instance, S3 collect all the output data, and that data are used by level design tool to, for the designer. Okay. okay, the effect again by the tool. So first, the Capcom team reduced the 60% about the communication cost. So since efficiency of the level design is improved significantly, so the designer have more time to do the level design to polish their stage. So the quality of the level design also improved. And with the two to do the autoplay, so the total workload also reduced by 50%. And so designers have more time to do their work to make the game fine or have rest. OK, so let's move to the deep dive part. Of. So first is about DynamDB. So Capcom team believe that DynamDB is excellent for the performance and the maintenance ability. However, they face some problem in consistency and usability. So Capcom team choose a method to alleviate those problems in application layer. So let me introduce, uh, explain what is the consistent problem. So consistent problem means that they need some transaction function to handle the situation in game, like some player use some money to buy some item. So at that time, project start DynamDB do not have the transaction function. And nowadays, DynamDB have some transaction function. However, Capcom team thought that they still have some limitation to use DynamDB transaction because they want to execute the transaction the same way as SQL. So there's another way to do the transaction uh, to use two-phase commit in application layer to use uh, sudo transaction. However, Capcom also did not took that action. So they thought if they use do the degrease transaction function, they should use Aurora to utilize the old transaction. So they are look for appropriate programmatic solution to use DynamDB in any version without transaction. So how do they do that? This is not the actual data, but it's just a simplified version of data uh, of the game structure. So for mobile game, in most of the cases, users' data can only be changed and referenced by that user which means user A's data can hardly be changed by user B. So Capcom team decide a project-wide policy. That is, define the table only by the owner and the application. Do not do, do the normalize and do not do the over-optimize. So in that way, and so most of the data can only be modified by that user. So keep the consistency is not so hard problem. 
So if some query failed, they can retry the query. And for some real case, Capcom use log to cover the failure. So that is all about consistent problem. Then let me introduce the usability problem. So the field, DynamDB, is quite a unique service and not like to other database. So there's many unique concepts in DynamDB, and it's hard to explain to all the developer member. So just uh, take an example of the normal case in the game. So consider you need to calculate a damage to the monster. And then how to calculate the damage? So first, you need to uh, find the equipment data of that user. Then you need to reference that equipment master data to find the attack of equipment. So how to do it? So they need four steps to do that one. First, developer needs to write a quite complete query use DynamoDB API. Of course, there's no autocomplete function. And then developer needs to check the error and convert the response to the Python object. Oh, they, they use Python in this project. And after that, uh, so based on the equipment ID, they check for the master data in memory and to find the detailed data. And then at last, link with those data and response to the user. So you can see it's quite a complex uh, progress. And furthermore, in game, those situations happen many times. So all the engineers, I, I think they are hate to do the reputation and they hate to copy and paste those of code many times. So let's take a furthermore completed example. So consider there's some resource can access by more than one player, for example, for the guild resource. So if we want to update that resource, atomic update is needed. So DynamDB had a feature called conditional update, which can solve this problem, but it still needs the complex query that I show in the slide. So developers are afraid of uh, spelling error and the typo in this complex query, so they may choose not to use that. So how Capcom solve those problems? And they create ORM, uh, object relation mapping, to DynamoDB with full scratch. So it covers a wide range of features, allow you to query the DynamoDB in a simple interface. So these two wrapper the complex API with a simple code and have the capability to map the DynamoDB object to the Python object. And also, it can join the table with the in-memory database and other table, and also have the capability to define the extension parameter, such as UUID and timestamp, which is very useful for games. And the most important of this tool is easy to use with code editor. So Capcom team thought, no matter how excellent the tool is, if it's hard to use the editor and you need to check the man page every time with every operation, so the tool failed to meet the requirement. So they thought that it's a, a little bit difficult to work with a library like Boto3 because it do not have autocomplete function. And this ORM have the autocomplete function with all the column of the table, which means that developers do not need to remember the table beforehand. And also, this ORM combined with a, a synchronized process framework with fully support of async I.O. And the most great thing is that this ORM will be available on the GitHub in this year. So you can find it just by searching uh, the Hasudenki. So it's a Japanese pronunciation. So DynamoDB, Dynamo, means uh, electronic generator. And electric generator, in Japanese, we call it Hasudenki. So the spelling are in the slide. You can check the ORM. So the lower uh, word are Hasudenki. OK, so what is the image to use this ORM? So as I mentioned before, you can use this ORM just by a simple one-line Python word. And you can also link with master data and other data. So at the QA session, 
the engineer who developed this ORM will also on stage. At that time, you can ask him about the detail information about this ORM. Okay, finally, there are some teams from Capcom about Amazon EKS and DynamDB. First, it's about cache. So since DynamDB is a connectionless service and the communication takes place over HTTP through the bottle three. So this means that DNS query have, happens every request. So Capcom team suggests you use a DNS cache. And for the EKS, Kubernetes has its own DNS in the cluster, which is affected by the DNS limitation of EC2. So query becomes slow when it hit limitation. So DNS cache should be set up and avoid to use EKS own DNS. And the second tip is about performance. So DynamDB is also do not need to do the uh, do not need to do the parameter tuning. So if you set enough capacity unit, it will get good performance. So it's basically a nice feature. However, it also means that there's no room for tuning I/O. So as a result. Code configuration is most important, and it's essential to write code progress more efficiently. And then let's move to the deep dive part of reinforced learning. So Capcom used reinforced learning to do the auto-playing. So in order AI to clear one stage, we also need to give the data to the AI. So the more accurate the input become, and the better AI understand, then the AI can easily clear one stage. So the diagram shows the structure of the input of the AI. So the picture on the left shows the actual stage of the, this puzzle game, and the board on the middle are showed the data we give to the AI. So for example, the top red layer is zero one data, which represent the tile position of right piece on the board. And at the same way, they do the other attribute, like green and yellow, and maybe some special field tile to another layer. And there's total about 24 layers. And in addition, neural networks are used for reinforced learning. So this is architecture, which is, consists of the multi-layer CNN and global average inputting. So let me describe more specific of this architecture. So the neural network are shown in the picture. And the input are on the left side, as I mentioned before, it's nine by nine by 24 layer. And it's followed by 11 iteration of the convolution layer and with two by two by 33 filter and with the ELDU activation function. Then there's a convolution layer with two by two by 81 filter and with an EAU activation function and followed by a global average pooling. And the final layer is a full connection layer. And for the reward, so reinforcement learning reward is set to plus one when AI clear one stage. And every time AI top the puzzle, they set a negative score with 0 0.01. Okay, here's some tips for reinforced learning. So often overlearning is caused by error setting in reward setting or too much learning. But Capcom caused overlearning in learning environment. So for example, there's two types of learning environment I show in the slide. Oh, by the way, so this stage can be clear if you erase all the wooden box. So let's see what happens. In the above diagram, the wooden box are put closely to each other in the bottom. And in the below diagram, the wooden box are put quite randomly. And first of all, let me show the environment that do the overlearning. So, so at first, you can see 
the wooden box are in the bottom, so AI can quickly clear that stage. And next, the lower wooden box are broken relatively quickly, but the upper wooden box are not to be broken. Oh, it's broken. Okay. So if the wooden box are put quite randomly, it takes a quite long time to break all the wooden box. So maybe you can think why it happened. Oh, it's still not be clear. Okay, not clear. Yeah, the wooden box in the, in the bottom, AI can quickly clear that stage. And lastly, let's see the scene if the wooden box put just on the top. So it also takes a long time to clear this stage. Maybe you can notice that AI are break the tiles in the bottom stage, but not break the tiles near the wooden box. So since the learning environment, the wooden box are placed in the bottom, AI seems to overlearn, break the tile below the center line rather than break the tile near the wooden box. That's called overlearning. Yeah, after I explained the other session, it's still not clear for this stage. Okay, I will skip that. So this is the normal case. And you can see, Oh, the music is gone. Okay, you can see, even though the wooden box are placed randomly, at this case, so it can quickly uh, clear the, all the stage. And also, I think the wooden box are put on the top of the stage. The AI can clear this stage quite quickly. So, if you set an inappropriate learning environment, even though the same reward, the same number of learning, can result in overlearned. So lastly, there's a graph comparing the number of uh, steps to clear one stage in overlearned mode and the normal mode. So the graph on the left are overlearned, and the graph on the right are what is not. So the red frame on stage execute the learning stage. So you can see the learning stage, both of the uh, overlearned mode and the learned mode could perform a small number of taps. But in overlearned mode, the other stage spend more taps to complete. Some stage may uh, cost considerable taps to clear that stage. And on the other hand, those who do not do the overlearn have the stable step, stable small step to clear that stage. So depending on the learning environment, the results change significantly. So Capcom team suggests that it is, uh, pay you need to pay attention to the learning environment as well as the reward of number of learning. Okay, the summary of the whole session. So Capcom improved the operational efficiency by using EKS and DynamoDB. So they eliminated 30% of operation cost and almost achieved zero infrastructure maintenance. And they also exerting their game design by using reinforced learning on AWS, reducing 6% of communication cost and 5% of their workload. So the session is about this. And next, I will go to the QA session. So let me introduce Kakon Field lead engineer and Jinping Nakajima and Kazuki Nakamura. Welcome to you. Uh, uh, uh. Hi, Junpei Nakajima. I'm, uh, I'm Junpei Nakajima. Uh, um, uh, system group head, uh, senior engineer. And uh, uh, main programming uh, of ORM. And uh, I do an uh, no, architecture diagram. Uh, architecture diagram uh, painted to uh, mine. Yeah, hi. he draw the diagram. <laughs> draw the diagram, yeah. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, Thank you for all the guys. Hi. I'm Kazuki Nakamura. I'm working on um, machine learning and data 
analytics. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So if you have some question, you can stand on the mic to get some question. So before maybe you, you can think about question, I will take the first question for that. OK, I will do the order translation uh, between the Japanese and the English. So first, I think uh, most of game company are think a same problem that how to introduce uh, AI and machine learning into their game. So um, yeah, Kazuki Nakamura, can you tell me the most important point that Capcom team think when bring uh, AI into the game? Ah, sorry, I speak Japanese. まずそのゲームにも限らないと思うんですけどその機械学習をその適用する時っていうところに関しては最終的に何を目的としているかっていうところに注意してやっています。So he said that not only in game, but other fields also the same way. And the most important thing is that why you want to bring the AI to your project. In this case, the most important thing is the cost of 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 the cost. あすみませんコスト削減とあとはそのクリアですねゲームをクリアできるレベルっていうところの NPC っていうところでよかったというところがあります。So in this progress, the main focus on to save the cost and also to I think is to reduce the operation workload of the developer. で目的がその AI で強いキャラクターとかを作るっていう場合には今回のようなその強化学習であったりっていうものを使わない可能性も十分にあります。So the goal is not for to make the best strongest AI. Maybe in some other case that will be the goal, but in this time it's not that goal. でその目的に応じてちゃんと機械学習を何を使うかっていうところを考えていかないとただその機械学習の勉強をしているだけのプロダクトみたいな形になってしまうのでそこは私が注意しているところですね。Yeah, so he said if we, when you do the machine learning, there's many methods. If you do the machine learning, you forgot that the origin purpose of you do the reinforced learning that the,、uh, The reinforced learning becomes no, no meanings, no meanings. Yes? That's all about that. So, anyone have some question? If you have some question, ask with the two people. You can come to the stage and come to the. Oh, please. Please come to the mic and ask a question. So, first of all,、uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge and experience. And so, I have three questions. Uh, first one is, are you guys are using a single region or multiple region for the cloud? And second question is, there are a lot of uh, other, uh, many other databases, open sources, and then in, even in AWS, there are many other databases. So is there any specific reason you guys choose DynamoDB? And third question is,、uh, so you, you know, previously you have used MongoDB, so after switching to DynamoDB, is there any Uh, performance evaluation, so which one is better and worse. So it, it would be nice to share the knowledge with us. Okay, let me repeat the question. So the first question is you use single region and multiple region. So, the first question is single region or multi region. So, the first question is single region or single region. So, the first question is single region or multi region. So, the first question is あのうん、なんと言ったらいいんですかねあの、まあ、決してこれは誤解をしないでほしいんですけれどもあのなんでしょうね障害が起こった時に、えー、必ず守らなければいけないデータというものが、えー、こと、えー、ゲームの世界においては本当に守らなければこれを守らなければ、えー、と人の、えー、命に関わるようなデータっていうのは基本的には扱っていないのであの障害にっていう対するものの、えー、シビアさっていうのは、えー、他の業界に比べてかなりえー、っとなんだろうなハードルが、えー、低い
のでそちらにコストをかけるよりも違うところに注力しましょうという理由で使ってないです。Okay, the answer, first answer is that they use a single region because they start in game compared with the other,、uh, other service like maybe finance and the bank service. They do not have the very critical data for games. So, they, so compared with the cost and、uh, the game the clock tactic, so they prefer to just、uh, save the all the data in the single region because. As I mentioned before, a game d o not have so critical data. And I think the second program is that、uh, the question is that there's many services in、uh, AWS. Why you choose DynamoDB? There are many services that you choose, but why did you choose DynamoDB? I think the third question is that you choose DynamoDB from DynamoDB. I think the third question is that you choose DynamoDB from DynamoDB. Uh, the second and the third question can be merged together and why you choose DynamDB and compare with MongoDB, why you choose DynamDB. 一つ目の、えー、二つ目かごめんなさい二つ目の質問に対してですけれども、まあ、これはデータ数あるデータベースのサービスの中からっていう意味の、えー、質問だと思うんですけれども。あ一回どうぞ So, I think so for the database choice,、uh, there's not only in the DynamDB, but all the database. えー、っとまあえー、数ある、まあ、比較対象として一番最初に当たったのあの上がったのはもちろん、えー、RDS のオーロラ DB なんですけれども、えー、っとメンテナンスコストっていうところに、えー、焦点を当てて、えー、採用するプロダクトを考えたときに。Okay, so they of, of course they consider our RDS compared with non-SQL and the main point they are thinking about is maintenance cost. えー、っと私の基準からすると、えー、RDS でもまだやはり、えー、っとメンテナンスのコストっていうのは、えー、高いと、えー、判断したので、えー、その中で、えー、いろんな他のデータベースの,サー,あのサービスを比べた時に、まあ、一番、えー、オペレーションのコストが低いのは、えー、ダイナモ DB であろうと、えー、いうことですね正直、えー、あどうぞ。はい、so they,、uh, they think that RDS still have some maintenance cost and instead of all the Database in AWS, they saw the DynamDB is the most least cost、uh, to do the operation. えー、と正直、その時は、えー、オペレーションのコストしか見ていなかったので、あの<笑>クエリーの内容だとか、えー、機能の内容だとかで、あの後でいろいろ苦労することが多かったです。So at that time, so they just think of the maintenance cost, and after they use DynamDB, they are quite、uh, some challenge in the application layer, do the query tuning and other, other things. ごめんなさい三つ目なんですか三つ目はあのモンゴ DB からダイナム DB に移行する理由が何かあのまあダイナム DB 評価するところが何かありますかえー、っとまあダイナモ DB とモンゴ DB 比べましてえー、っと今であれば AWS さんドキュメント DB というサービスが、えー、ございますけれども So compare with ダイナム DB and モンゴ DB currently AWS has a document DB service えっとまあそのまあ、前回のタイトルで MongoDB 使わせていただいたんですけれども、まあ、その時にはまだドキュメント DB というものがまあサービスインしていなかったのであの、まあ、フルマネージドではない状態で MongoDB を使っていたというところを。So in their previous project, the document DB are not released, so they fully use their own operation for the MongoDB. はいえー、なので、えー、MongoDB から、えー、DynamoDB の違いというよりは、えー、マネージドでないサービスからフルマネージドのサービスへの移行っていうところの方が、えー、ギャップに苦しむことが多かったです。So the point is not move the,、uh, MongoDB to DynamoDB, but move from the、uh, non management service to management service. That is a big deal. まあ、具体的にはそのなんだろうマネージドだったらできるその無茶ができないというかえっとなんだろうなえ一時的にインスタンスのえタイプを爆上げしてここだけ乗り切るぞみたいなそういう強引なオペレーションがフルマネージドではできない。Okay, so how to translate? So in managed database, you can do a quite tricky operation like to Uh, maybe for the DynamDB, you can make the capacity unit very high、uh, at a, a very short time. It can do such tricky things to handle the operation. 
以上で大丈夫ですかね。So that's all of the questions. Okay for you? Okay? Okay. Hey, I have a question.、Uh, thanks for the presentation. It was, it was excellent.、Um, you showed in the beginning the evolution from on premise to private cloud and then、mm -hmm. to AWS.、Mm -hmm. Have you all moved towards a zero data center footprint? And then those migrations that involve the Kubernetes service and getting off the on premise, could you just talk a little bit about that?、Uh, I'm sorry, could you please repeat your question a little bit slower to、oh, let me catch up that one? Yes. So in the beginning, you showed. Capcom had to move from data centers、mm -hmm. to the private cloud. しし、はい、and then from private cloud into AWS、まあ、to support the mobile games. しし so, are you guys now exclusive to using AWS as your game provider? And then, how difficult or easy was that migration process for you guys? Yeah, so, I think,、uh, I think this question may be good to be answered by the VPOE Shinshi Inoue. So, let us introduce him on the stage.、Yeah. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of introduction. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of introduction. むずかしいところがなくて、ゲームってプロダクトがね、あの定期的に出ると思うんですけど、えっと稼働中のサービスをそのままえっとオンプレミスからプライベートクラウドもしくはプライベートクラウドからパブリッククラウドに移すってことは
just let me explain what they, he said uh, that. So even though Capcom team developers have the ability to do some operation workload, they thought they can use management and partner like AWS to follow that, and they can focus on the game, uh, make the game more fun. So that is all the session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.